Hello and welcome everybody. Hope you can all see. Just making some adjustments here. Hope you guys can all see and hear me. Thank you for hanging out again uh, with me and uh, this backstage community. You guys will let me know. Give me a uh, thumbs up if you can hear me and see me okay. That would be awesome. Super. Good. Good to see some familiar faces here. Really excited to have a conversation with you a little bit later. And, you know, to kind of get into the topic, how to separate industry fact from fiction. Great. Good. I'm glad. Uh, never want to be talking out there into the ether. So welcome, everybody. Hope everybody is good. You guys are taking good care of yourselves and um, and others. And again, a very thank, a big thank you to Backstage for creating this series and for inviting me to speak with you every week. Um, Many of you guys know I've been collaborating with Backstage for many years and all the articles are archived up on Backstage. So check them out and enjoy them. They're all fun and you know, are meant to be empowering to, to you guys. Uh, my name is Joseph Perlman and my studio Perlman Acting Academy, we're based in Los Angeles, but we offer private coaching and classes via Zoom from Hollywood to anywhere in the world and we help actors launch their careers faster and reach Oscar potential on set. What we believe at the studio is that you can launch your career faster and with less effort when you are lit up with fun. And I'm really, really trying to make everything that I put out there for you guys about that, you know, at the core, about feeling great, how you feel is what you get. Everybody listening to this is invited uh, to attend a free audit if you haven't already in one of our weekly classes, including my master class, a small group of our celebrity and series lead level actors. And we are working with these actors every week on currently casting major film and TV auditions, their booked roles. Essentially, we're practicing how we're playing. So we're practicing um, in a you know, the, exactly what we do in the class is exactly what you're going to do out there. We're triggering the experience already having been completed. So you can go in there and do it again, a different fun way. So welcome. Uh, please follow us on Instagram, uh, Joseph Perlman, J-O-S-E-P-H, J-O-S-E-P-H-P-E-A-R-L-M-A-N. And um, our website is www.josephperlman.com. P-E-A-R-L-M-A-N.com. And there you can go and sign up for a free audit. And I'm very excited to welcome you to the studio. So how to separate industry fact from fiction. I've been wanting to talk about this with you guys for a while now because it's really important. And I've mentioned some things in previous videos, but it's going to be good to kind of dive into all of them because there's a lot of clutter. I think with all of the media and all of these opinions, it's almost like it's easy to sort of be a waste receptacle for all sorts of stuff, you know, just kind of hitting us. And there's no one size fits all to an acting career, you guys. And yeah, there's something called, a Listen, first of all, before we get into this, there's just there's something that my chest wants to just acknowledge. It's been a really intense couple of weeks. Um, I am just really grateful that we, you know, you guys are here. We can come together as a community. And the other thing that we're doing at the studio is this isn't the, you know, this isn't the end of this conversation. This is just the beginning for us. We are evolving right alongside uh, those of you. Uh, black members, those of you members of color, and we want to talk with you about that. And that's what we do in the classes. We had a really interesting event uh, last night where we just just heard people out and had a conversation. So again, um, I stand in support with the black community and those members of color. I want you to know that I love you and um, just really welcome you to the studio to let you know that it is a safe space. This is a safe space 
to talk about things that are important for you. So I wanna just clear the air and say that to you guys. And again, thank you from the bottom of my heart for actually being here and being a part of this conversation. Okay, so I feel like we're all sort of taking a collective breath together and I just wanted to, you know, I just wanted to reach out and to, and to say that to you guys. And especially a lot of you here are people that I know and I work with and I do wanna speak with you. So there's something called fear, something called FUD, F-U-D, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, okay? Fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and it's spread. It's spread actor to actor. It's spread agent manager uh, to actor. It's spread around the industry, and fear is really at the heart of that. And Yuval Noah Harari, um, the great writer of the book Sapiens, he speaks about the dangers of stories that we tell ourselves, especially stories of suffering. You think of the stories that we, you tell yourself, that we tell ourselves, that involve some you know, form of pain, like having a career has to feel like you know, climbing an unattainable mountain. Um, um, you know, it, it feels like effort when it's possible to teleport. So what I want to start off with is to identify those stories of suffering that we tell ourselves that are not useful. Uh, it's similar in acting. And I'm going to divide this up into, we're going to be talking about industry myths with regards to your career and also industry myths with regard to acting. So let go of your stories of suffering. Some people call them mind viruses. You know, the things that we say to each other and to ourselves that hold us back from getting where we want to go faster. And we're going to talk about some of those. And here are some of those mind viruses. Here are some of those stories of suffering that we tell ourselves. Casting directors, uh, we tell ourselves that casting directors make final casting decisions. So it's, so it's important for me to, you know, toady up to them and to please them and to get in their good graces. That is not true. Casting directors don't make final casting decisions. That is the job of producers. That is the job of production. And I'm going to talk about it in a bit. Casting directors have an amazingly intense, hard, important job to do, but making the final decisions uh, is not that. Another story of suffering that I want to let go is that you can't compete for major roles without major credits or agents or managers. That is simply not true. Um, not true at all. And many, many actors, the actors that I've worked with um, and other actors who I haven't worked with, it is possible to compete for major film and TV roles and book them on your own without reps and without having had major credits. And I talk about it extensively in my other videos and I'm gonna get into it a little bit deeper. And then another sort of story of suffering, another bit of untruth that we tell ourselves is that to launch a major career, you have to be in LA or New York or one of the big sort of acting cities. And that is not true. And it hasn't been true for a little while. It's not just because of the pandemic. It is possible to launch a major acting career from wherever you are in the world. And when you need to go shoot it, their planes, they go back and forth and you can get on one to shoot it. We have an incredible um, a friend, uh, a client, uh, Catherine DeSev, in uh, my master class. And Catherine is a Montreal-based actor. And I may have spoken about this before. We worked together um, maybe about a year and a half ago, and she really wanted to be on The Handmaid's Tale. And I showed her how it was possible to build and maintain relationships with the executive producers, the people that create that show. Long story short, in five and a half months, she's on The Handmaid's Tale in a massive scene with Elizabeth Moss, having created that experience all by herself without the help of agents and managers, without the help of reps. So you can do it. One of the most chronic, I'd say, untruths or delusions that I see actors that I see you guys getting distressed about is the belief that an agent or a manager is a magic pill. 
that once found, they will solve this existential dilemma and deliver an acting career to you on a silver platter. And it never happens that way. And here's why. 99% of the industry's agents and managers do not know how to or deliberately choose not to use a telephone to pitch their clients to production offices and casting directors for major film and TV. They don't use the phone. Um, why? The biggest reason is one, fear. Two, they didn't know that they were supposed to do that. And they're afraid someone will get mad at them if they pick up the phone. And I've heard this a lot. So-and-so casting director will have my head if I call. Um, instead, what they do, and you guys know this, they choose to submit their clients via, you know, submit them online via breakdown services or, or, or other services. And there's no way to make a significant living as an agent or a manager without using the phone to pitch their clients. And I've, I've mentioned this quote a while, for a while. It's a Steve Jobs quote. He said, the ability to use the telephone properly separates the doers from the dreamers. And actors who are submitted solely online by their reps, it's like they stand a lottery's chance at best of ever getting into an audition room. It's like throwing a bunch of stuff on the wall and seeing what's a bunch of gum on the wall and seeing what sticks. Um, furthermore, if that rep miraculously through that lottery sort of mindset of submitting them, gets their client an audition from the online submission, the chances of that actor's performance making it to producers is like an even, you know, it stands even greater odds. So it's like, it, it's, it's almost nil um, versus the agent manager or actors who have built relationships beforehand as part of your strategy with writers, directors, producers, production that are then going into the casting process, production approved, network approved, director approved. Um, yeah, and, and I think at the bottom of why it's not done is fear. But using the telephone, as Steve Jobs said, um, it, it, it separates the doers from the dreamers. And it's critical for separating the mega successes from the folks that don't get there. And how do we fix it? There's a right way and a wrong way for actors to directly pitch themselves for every role that you guys are right for um, when you're at your Olympic best. While building game-changing relationships with major writers, directors, producers, and casting directors. And so let's talk a little bit about this because I've, I've talked in past videos about, you know, the start of the conversation. What are the questions you need to answer in order to get to the point where you can pitch yourself? And it's important to know, one, to be at your Olympic best as actors. And this is the Olympics. And it's two to really know what you want. Where do you want to go? How do you fit in? What are the projects that you might want to originate, you know, if you're a writer? And let's come back to this. Um, although casting directors whittle down sometimes masses to a select few, they don't actually cast actors. Writers, directors, and producers make all final casting decisions. Um, again, so happy to see some familiar faces here. I will open it up to some questions uh, a little bit later, so hang around. And I'm really hoping to have some fun with you guys today. And thank you for, thank you very much for being here. The myth um, that casting directors are the gatekeepers to your career, it causes a lot of FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt um, among actors who think it's their duty to spend their emotional energy toadying up to and trying to please casting directors. They're an important alliance to have, but they are not a magical pill. They're not jangling the keys um, to your to your salvation for your career. Um, the production team has hired the casting director to help them find the best actors. Okay, this is similar to how a production team will hire location scouters to find the best filming locations. In the case, in this case, the casting director is just another great person who is trying to complete their job as best as they can. So they'll be hired again. Again, 100% of the people in this industry are people. And it's important to adopt the attitude 
that you're a colleague, that you're an equal. We are all in the same boat here. You are not below anybody else. That's another myth that somehow actors are below casting directors or below production. No, we are all on the same boat. And if you adopt that attitude, um, and it's one of confidence, um, then that is, you know, that goes really far when you're pitching and when you're communicating with industry members. So casting directors do push certain actors forward. They weigh in beh behind closed doors about who they think is right for the role, but the writers, directors, and producers always have the final say in casting. So again, how do you fix it? You need to know how you're gonna sell yourself when you or your team get on the phone with production and casting. And it's a really important question to have and to think about. How are you gonna arm your reps? How are you gonna give, how are you gonna deliver on a silver platter to your reps how they're gonna sell you? It was never your agent or manager's job to figure out what your high level marketing and branding is. And again, your high level marketing and branding has nothing to do with your niche or your type. A hundred actors can have the same niches and types um, your high level branding is something that's called value proposition or unique value proposition. And distilling that uh, is worth all of the time and energy you can put into. And what is a value proposition? It's a succinct statement that gets straight to the point. It's a statement. Think of it as sort of an elevator pitch, um, but it doesn't sound like a pitch. It hits home with what you're offering why it's beneficial and why you are the answer to their quandary, why you are the answer to the problem of, you know, who to cast. And it talks about a lot of things, but at the, at the core of the value proposition um, is you, what are your core values? What do you stand for? What do you believe? What gets you up in the morning? And it's the DNA of all of your marketing, social media, email pitches, etc. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of folks, Value proposition is something that is, it's not even taught at most business schools. It's taught at Harvard Business School. It's taught at some other select business schools, but it's super important. And um, those actors who, actors and organizations who are at a really high level in their careers have done that work. Uh, they know what they're about uh, and they, they understand the results that they deliver and, and give it to people in a clear way. So unfortunately, a lot of folks don't do that work um, and they neglect to lay this strong foundation before they dive in and invest a lot of time and energy and money in their career and all the collateral that goes with it, like reels and pictures and websites, social media, stylists, PR, et cetera. Um, and so, yes. So what I want you to do is to reject all the things in your career that you think are holding you back. Like I'm not in the right location or I don't have an agent or a manager. I implore you to stop looking for an agent or a manager because if only 99% of them know that it was their job to pick up the phone and pitch you, um, signing with an agent or a manager that doesn't know that you're going to be sitting on a roster for years and nothing's going to happen. There's a right way and a wrong way for you to do it yourself. So really what I'm saying is when you're at your Olympic best, you guys, Nothing should stop you from having the career of your dreams, okay? That, that's, you know, the summary of what I've been talking about with the career. With regards to acting, there's some really important myths that I want to debunk and to clear the, you know, to clear the table. One is this. In your audition instructions, it's important to, when you get those, to read all of them, but... The myth is that you must obey all character descriptions, all character descriptions and stage directions. And that's a myth. Character descriptions and stage directions are meant to be used as a guideline, not a gospel. Okay. They are not your acting instructions. Character description. Um, they're not for you to obey. Character description is oftentimes written by casting or breakdown services to give you an understanding of the world of the piece. So you understand the style. And the stage directions um, are, for the most part, part of a writer's pitch to help producers um, see what could be possible here. But they were never your acting instructions, except in very specific cases um, where the language is very stylized and specific. So, yeah. And, and, and 
when too many actors treat these things as obsolete that they must incorporate, then you get too many auditions that look identical over and over again. And it's one of the things I talked about last week in how to put together a winning cold read is identify the thing that everybody's going to do, the obvious choice. And it typically comes from the stage directions and the character description. So you are released from the responsibility of having to obey them, but I'm not telling you to ignore them. They are not to be ignored, but we are going to create choices uh, that are going to be like the stage directions, but better than anybody had ever thought of before. Um, furthermore, I think, again, as a reminder, the descriptions writers put into their work are to, are to help producers better visualize the story. Um, and they're not for you to obey. So allow the character description and the stage directions to help guide and inspire you, but don't feel shackled by them, okay? You still have to add your own paint and colors to the canvas. And myth number three is this. The myth is that the audition, you know, starts when you start acting and it doesn't. The audition starts after you slate. It doesn't. The audition um, never starts the moment you start acting or start uttering the words from your sides. The audition begins the moment you, you enter the building, the moment you put your car in the space, the moment you, you, you come into a virtual room or walk in. And once you are there and you are present on the location, virtual or in person, you're on. And I'm not saying that you have to be in character, but you have to start being the person as a human being and as an actor who is the solution to the casting puzzle of filling the role. You need to, you need to step foot in completely prepared, focused, ready to begin at a moment's notice. And we talk about it a lot during the week in the classes is that I think a lot of people don't know that when you go into a room with the people that you may be collaborating with, even if it's casting, they may be looking to interview you as a person before you, the actor. And although I've mentioned it before, it's important to say it again, you really wanna let go of your preparation when you go in the room because they're trying to figure out what you're gonna be like to hang out with for a year, or six years, or however long the project is. And you wanna establish these three things. You wanna establish that you are fun to play with that you're someone that they can personally like and that there's no desperation in the room. And one of my friends, Alex Ashinger, who is one of the wonderful coaches at the studio, says that, you know, if you go into the room with the intention of, hey, maybe I'll make a couple of friends, um, it's a good attitude to have, but it's more about what you're not bringing in instead of something you're putting on to be something someone will like. And the, I, I, as always, you should never try to please anybody else. That should never be your goal. Great casting directors, great production members never want you to please them. They just want to meet great people and they want great, fun, brave, dangerous choices. Um, here's another myth. Uh, the myth is that you shouldn't get too big. We shouldn't be too big in the acting. And being big is often not a bad thing. The fear of being too big is maybe one of the biggest fear sources of anxiety I hear from actors before auditions. Are you sure? Are you sure they won't think I'm too big? Shouldn't I throw it away more? Um, bottom line, and I, and I say this in the improvisation, if you're afraid to look like an asshole or a freak, you will. So don't be afraid to look like one. Um, moreover, a note I continually hear from production and casting is that they, you guys, they can always pull you back but they're never gonna pull out that big brave choice if you didn't have the courage to do it. And that's what we're doing in the acting work. We're finding these dangerous choices that are unlike what anybody is doing. So the production team can say, oh, whoa, it wasn't at all what we were looking for, it was better. So to thank you for being the only one willing to take a risk. And I'll say it now, it's your ability to commit to those dangerous, risky, against the grain, non um, cliche choices that will guarantee a win for you when you go into an audition room in the form of a callback, a book troll, or a chemistry read, or somebody falling in love with you, they bring you back in over and over again until something connects. So don't be afraid of being too big uh, at all. Um, myth, another myth, when auditioning for co-stars or small roles, um, don't, make a, don't make a meal out of a snack. 
<laughs> okay? This isn't true. A lot of actors think that when they're auditioning for smaller roles, it's just they're supposed to sort of um, stand back, not do anything, just throw it away. Um, it's sort of the sort of having the attitude of I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to hope they like the way I look and not stand out. That is false. Uh, the same work that that you know the same work that I would do with someone who booked the lead in Ridley Scott's last movie is the same work we're going to do for that one liner, that co-star role. It's the same work. It's just we're going sm we're just going crazier inside of a smaller structure but you still have to ask yourself all those questions. You still have to be on the support of, uh, uh, of strong emotional choices. You still want to be lit up. Remember, the difference between good and great, listen, I think the difference between good and great, great living and great acting, great speaking you know, presentation is, are you starting lit up emotionally? Are you starting full? Do you have fun in your body for something? So it's the same choices you have to make. And... I hear this all the time um, when auditioning for smaller roles, actors say they're, um, when auditioning for smaller roles, they're supposed to know their place, say the line, not attract too much attention. The myth behind this mindset is that the powers um, that be want small parts to be a bit utilitarian and thrown away. The only truth in this is that you're not supposed to belt out your lines Broadway style on bended knee projecting to the back of an imaginary theater. It all needs to be done within the structure, within the confines. Again, we're what's the structure that we get to go crazy in? Sometimes it's smaller and sometimes it's bigger. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it's like I really want you to clear the path for yourselves to get to where you want to be because there is nothing, I promise you, I, I think 99% of the time, the Things that we make as obstacles are not really obstacles. They're just things we're putting there because either we're afraid of what's beyond it or, you know, we're listening to other people projecting their own fears on it. And again, your, your path is going to be your own. So don't let anybody tell you. It's, you, you, gotta, you gotta, again, it's like very easy to be a trash receptacle for all of this advice coming at you. Um, from folks that don't know you and folks that don't know this industry. Um, so it, it really is important to take some and leave some. And if something doesn't feel right to you, like if it doesn't feel like it's on the support of fun, then question why you're doing it. I want you guys to create your own types, not listen to what somebody's idea of your niche or your type is. Um, but what's the thing that you're going to do that's a singularity that nobody else can do? I'd like to know, I'd like to hear from you guys. I, I really want to have a little sharing here. I want to know um, if, there anything, if there's anything that you're putting as an obstacle to you successfully and getting to where you want to get in your career. And I want to have a little bit of a conversation with you guys uh, if you'd like to. So I would say jump into the chat here. I'm going to see if you guys have any questions. Um, or thoughts, but jump in. Anybody have any sort of things that they've sort of put as an obstacle? I mean, I really mean it. It's you, you do not have to be in LA or New York um, to get great. Okay. You have access to the best of the best um, virtually, whether it's acting classes, um, the ability to build and maintain relationships with great writers, directors, producers, to schedule virtual general meetings with industry professionals and to audition and get called back and have producer chemistry read sessions. So nothing that should keep you from doing it. You should be focusing all of your time on taking care of other people, taking care of yourself, feeling amazing. Uh, let's see, any questions or thoughts here? Here we go. Mm, let's see, I feel like my obstacle is location. I think I already talked about it. Location is no longer an obstacle, not because of the pandemic. It never was an obstacle. Um, it never was an obstacle. You need to get on a plane to shoot something. So, so take that off of your radar. Let's see here. Okay, the, uh, D Dan, good question. Dan Molson, the one issue about finding your own roles without an agent is that many roles don't go out to open casting calls as far as I see in my limited career so far. Okay, here's another myth you need to think of when roles are released, when they're coming down the sort of air conditioning vents and they're being released to casting, it's oftentimes too late to compete. 
if you don't have pre-existing relationships miles before. Does that make sense? If you don't have pre-existing relationships before that audition. So what I am proposing, Dan, I believe it was, is that you are very clear about who are the people that you want to collaborate with, the production teams, the creators, the executive producers, and learn how to sell yourself when you pick up the phone, how to properly pitch yourself, where you're not putting anyone to work, where you don't want anything, where you're building a relationship that's going to last your whole career miles before it ever gets to casting. So I want you to unthink that just when roles are released um, and when it gets to casting is when the audition process starts. Do you guys know that there are over 20 ways of getting a high level role before it ever gets to casting? other than a traditional wash, rinse, repeat of get an audition, go to casting. Um, a lot of things happen behind the scenes, um, post-casting as well too. So I want you to think about it in that different way. There's strategy is three points. An actor's strategy is one, pre-game, building relationships before, the day of, doing the best acting that you can possibly do, and then the follow-up game. What am I going to do to make sure that video was watched, to make sure it was seen? You know, there, there are certain pieces of software that you can use when sending videos to make sure that it was watched and, you know, and looked at. Let's see. Um, great. Uh, Melissa Schilling, welcome and thank you for being here. How do you get contact information for production and people, casting, casting directors? Well, that is one of the easiest things to do um, between Google, IMDb Pro. Um, there's really, there, there's an incredible, I'll, I'll a friend of mine, Heidi Levitt uh, and Lauren Fernandez, casting directors. Heidi Levitt is one of the greatest casting directors in the industry, a good friend. She's Oliver Stone's casting director. Um, Heidi Levitt and Lauren Fernandez created an app for actors called Actor Genie. Um, and it's an app that has a database of every single casting director, talent agent manager from New York to LA with their key credits. Um, and, and so there's, there's many different ways. The longest it'll ever take to get someone's contact information is about 20 minutes. Um, you have to sleuth it sometimes, but there are great sources. Like I said, IMDb Pro, Actor Genie, uh, going on Google, uh, et cetera. Let's see. Um, oh, let's see. Oh, great. Um, Sharia Jane, what advice would you give for a person who wants to take acting well, as a career from India? I would say... I would say just, it's awesome that you're in India. Thank you for hanging out with us. Um, no idea what time it might be there, but it's probably not even today there. Uh, what I would recommend is this, jumping in. Um, first of all, you guys are all invited to come to a free audit in one of uh, our classes uh, in the coming weeks. If you haven't already, just email us at the website, www.josephperlman.com, P-E-A-R-L-M-A-N.com. And our studio manager um, is going to set you up with a free audit. What you should do is jump into a high level acting class uh, virtually or in person and get great. Okay. It's not enough to be good. You have to be great. So dedicate yourself and getting great is fun. It's not suffering. It's fun. Dedicate yourself to being the best actor you can possibly be. And then be very clear about what you want to do, who you want to work with and learn how to, how are you, think about how are you gonna sell yourself when you pick up the phone and you build, the, build those relationships. And I've talked about it extensively in past videos um, and, 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 and big time in one of the first, I think it was the first Slate videos that I did. Um, here we go. All right, let's see here. Um, Liam Matthew, are self tapes acceptable to send top casting directors if the show reel is not relevant or good enough and means to get a new reel? Well, I don't know if you, you watched my video on basically it's sort of, um, the new way of sending reels, but it's very important that you rethink how to create a badass reel with less effort that you're sending production relevant material. Okay. You can have a traditional segmented reel on YouTube or your website. That's just sort of for show. But when you're pitching for a specific project, um, a reel that contains material that's unrelated to that project can do more to shut you out of contention, um, can do more to shut you out of contention than, um, than help you. So I would watch that video because I speak about it extensively. Let's see. Um, again, uh, Olamide Sarami, thank you for, Sar Sarami, sorry, Sarami. 
Olamide or Olamide Sarami, what advice would you give for a person who wants to take acting as a career from England? Um, jump into a high level acting class. Um, come and take an audit at, at our studio and for free and, and, and watch the work and see if you like it. Jump into an acting class and get great. Um, let's see. Um, yes, I do that work with clients. I do that work with actors. Almost everyone at my studio, I've done the launch your career program work where we distill high level Harvard Business School value proposition and help them build game changing relationships with great writers, directors, and producers in phone calls that are 30 to 60 seconds long, followed by an email. Um, and it's awesome. And we talk about it extensively. So I said, come to a free audit. And we're going to be talking about it uh, a bit there too. And you're welcome to do that work with me should you want to. Um, uh, Giovanni Rosselli, let's see. Yes, Dan Molson, definitely watch the other videos for sure. Um, and I get it, it's hard to get over the stigma of like contacting production. I get it, you guys, the thought of picking up a phone, it could hurt your chest. It hurts my chest sometimes to think about picking up a phone. It's sort of like, Joseph, what are you talking about? Are you crazy? When you're great, okay, when you're great, whether you have credits, whether you have reps or not, it is your responsibility to do the heavy brush clearing and cutting. There is no, as Mark Duplass said at South by Southwest, there is no cavalry that's ever coming for you. You always have to do it. No matter, you know, we, we have actors at the studio who have spent six seasons on Game of Thrones, are starring in some of the biggest you know, series on, 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 on cable right now, and they're still in the same boat. They still have to you know, sharpen themselves every week and learn how to pitch themselves and show people that they're right for other roles. I get it. It hurts your chest sometimes to make those calls, but you have to do it. You have to do it. Um, there's a beautiful documentary with Jimmy uh, Iovine and Dre, I believe. I can't remember the name of it. If one of you guys can put it in the chat, it's incredible to watch the tenacity um, that Jimmy Iovine has. Uh, that Jimmy Iovine has, and he talks about using the phone and how it's the only way. I get it. But when you adopt the attitude that you're a colleague, uh, when you put ironclad confidence in your body, when you, are, when you are coming in as an equal collaborator, and when you clearly know how to sell yourself on the phone, um, you, you, you can't not do this work. Otherwise, you're just playing this, this, this waiting game. You're in this sort of vicious cycle of, you know, I... I, I I hope auditions sort of fall into my lap and I hope I get them. You don't, when you get an audition, you don't want to hope you get a producer session. You want to already have come into that audition, production producer approved. You want it to be, you want it to be almost a given that you're going to be seen by production. Okay. I want to help you guys save you time um, and not have to suffer, suffer through this. Let's see. Oh, thank you. The Defiant Ones. Brilliant. Um, whoever is BU. Yes, it's called The Defiant Ones. Um, Jimmy Iovine literally locked himself in a room for days making phone calls, making phone calls happen. Yes, please watch that documentary. It's a great documentary. Um, yeah, let's see here. Uh, any other, um, yes, we do classes are for, for all ages and, you know, I'm gonna, you come and come and watch a class. I'm not going to talk about our classes here. The classes are small and it's a lot of fun. And let's see. Mm, oh, good question. Emily Ramsey, is it just casting directors you should make contacts with? What about show creators? No, it's not. No, if you, you guys have heard me and I'm, hopefully you're hearing me out. It's not just casting directors you want to schedule general meetings with or virtual general meetings with or reaching out to. And I'm, I'm going to say it again in bold. You want to be reaching out to executive producers, creators, writers, directors, and casting directors and other actors not directly to them, using the appropriate channels. There's a right way to do it. Um, there are different ways to contact these people. There's no one size fits all. So it is very important to reach out to everybody because you want to come into an audition um, with the casting director knowing that you are production producer approved. And not only that, the executive producers and the creators right now, you guys, they're creating 60 to 100 other projects each right now, okay? Casting may be casting, you know, up to 27 major projects a year, more or less, 
but every production office is creating like 60, 100 projects. There's so many projects that have been in the works. Um, so yes. Oh, great. Vicky Lynn Cox. So leaning into our careers and believing in ourselves is a big part of it. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome, Emily. Yes. Leaning into it. I'm not sending you into the fire, you know, making a phone call. You're never going to catch on fire. You're never going to burn your hand. Okay. I want you empowered. I want you all empowered and I want you feeling great. I want to take another question or two. Let's see. Um, how might a person entering the industry later in life pursue building relationships? I was thinking of doing a video um, at some point pending backstage's approval is how to, how to launch a dream, your dream career at any age. Because again, the fact that you're at whatever age you are is no obstacle to you getting a major career off the ground. The same rules apply. So basically the short, the quick and dirty answer is, is it doesn't matter what age you're at. Uh, in fact, the actors that are, some of the actors that are uh, 50, 60, 70 are getting more opportunities than the younger folks these days. So don't make that a thing. It is not an obstacle. Uh, and it may be worth doing a, a solo video or article on it at some point. So thank you for bringing that up. Yes, we teach classes to kids and teens, um, celebrities, beginners, working professionals, everybody. Um, I even work with people who are non-actors, um, TED Talk presenters, Doctors Without Borders, um, World Health Organization, um, you know, all, all sorts of people, people wanting more confidence when they come in. So we, we work with everybody at the studio. Let's see here. Um, oh, Diana Trotter. Good. Please do the age video. Well, I, like I said, um, this is a, I, I, I can very lucky to be collaborating with backstage over these years. I will, I will reach out to backstage and should it be something they'd like to do, uh, it would be an honor to do a video about that. Let's see. Joe, um, oh yeah, that's beautiful what you said. Joe Quimby, thanks for being here. As a featured background actor for the past two years, I found that treating everyone you meet on set is oh so, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming treating everyone with respect. I mean, my gosh, yes. Um, being the great people that you are um, is so important. And yeah, and part of being the great people that we are is having the freedom to speak. You know, I talk a lot about it in the work that I do is your words become your reality. Like what you, your, your words have power and the words you use with other people um, actually do something to other people. So yes, being the great people that you are and showing that to people when you walk in a room and are on set is everything to do with how successful that you are. And really at the end of the day, you guys, you're going to, you're going to be successful. Your acting choices are a part of it, but it's just because of you. You know, it's, um, it's, it's, who, it's just who, it's who you are. And there's a beautiful Shel Silverstein poem that always makes me take a deep breath when I say it. Underneath my outside face, there's a face that none can see. A little less smiley, a little less sure, but a whole lot more like me. I love it. <laughs> Gives me a, just take a breath just saying it. Just permission to be yourselves, you know? And I also say, too, please stop listening to other actors' fear-based advice. Actors are the most wonderful people that I know, but there's a lot of fear-based advice. So just maybe it could help you out trying to think of a way to say, hey, listen, um, thank you. I, I know you're trying to help me, but it, it would actually help me um, for me to kind of find my own way through this. So I, I would rather not talk about industry or career-related things. I greatly appreciate it. And I know you're coming from a place of thanking them first and then letting them know um, that you might not want to have these conversations because there is a lot of fear-based advice and it can, these stories of suffering, as you've all know, Harari said, can do more to hold you back uh, than help you. And um, go to my website. You're asking, uh, Lexi, where do we email for a free audit? Go to the website, www.josephperlman.com. P-E-A-R-L-M-A-N.com, click the contact section, and it'll and automatically send an email to us. Let us know you want to audit. Um, or you can just email info at josephperlman.com, P-E-A-R-L-M-A-N.com. Either way, um, you're welcome to, um, to come and watch the work uh, for free and see what we're doing in class. Any other questions? I'm here for you guys today. So check in with me. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, Kama Linden, thanks for saying the age thing. I'm 50, but I don't look my age. I'm very fit and a musician. In fact, my album, Everything in Good Time, released today on Spotify. I look for, oh, congratulations. 
comma. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's not an obstacle at all to your success. So take a breath and, and move forward into it. And congratulations uh, on your album. Um, oh yeah, Randy Oppenheimer. It seems that the way to get in the door for casting directors is to have an agent who has connections. Otherwise, how do you get those auditions? Yes, I mean, I've just, I've been talking for a little while now. That is false. I get that it seems that way, but that is not the case. Great casting directors, people like Heidi Levitt. I can't tell you how many wonderful friends of mine are casting directors and consistently say to me, Joseph, if an actor is legitimately right for a role and they're a great person, there is a very right way to reach out and connect. What casting directors don't want is what they call the American Idol masses banging down their door because let's get real, there are a lot of folks out there that it's sort of the equivalent of saying that they like to play the tuba and they study it for six weeks and then they feel entitled to audition for the head of the New York or Los Angeles Philharmonic, okay? Um, it's really important that you get to be great. Okay, and that's more than six weeks of work. Um, I believe it's possible to have a breakthrough transformation every time you get up and work um, or we don't stop. And I feel like you get there faster, but you have to be great. And when you're great, there are no rules, just more opportunities for bravery. So no, that wash, rinse, repeat of get an agent, hope I get the audition. Because like I said, one by the time it's casting, oftentimes it's too late to meaningfully compete. What I want you to do and what I help my uh, clients and actors do at the studio is how do you build relationships to get in the mix, to get in the vent, to get in the bloodstream miles before it ever gets to casting. So you're coming to casting already pre-known, pre-approved by production. I promise you there's a whole other level to this game. Um, so don't get bogged down in these sort of mind virus type thoughts, uh, the stories of these stories of suffering. Um, Let's see, uh, any other questions? Hey, Kama Linden, thank you very much. Yes, thank you so much. I look forward to connecting with you guys every week and I'm very grateful that, that, you, that you keep coming back uh, and wanna be a part of it. Um, that's a great question. Um, can I talk a little, well, let's see. What is the right way, where do you get to? Oh yeah, all of our classes are virtual, okay? At some point, we'll get back to some in-person uh, classes, but all of our classes, we have all of our classes are via Zoom. They are all virtual. So, so you can be a part of our classes from anywhere in the world, a part of any of our classes. So all of our classes are virtual. Um, and at some point, we'll get back to some in-person classes, but we will always have online virtual classes for actors. And we always have. It's not just a, a pandemic thing. It's just we've done more of them, but you can always work uh, with us virtually. Any other sort of questions or, or myths or things that you're making as obstacles to your success, um, we can hang out for a few more minutes and talk about them. Let's see. Yes, it's so great. Is social media, uh, Kaya, Kaya, uh, Kaya or Kia Thomas, is social media an important to contact and make connections with CDs, directors, and producers? Yes, but don't let somebody tell you that you have to be on social media. You do social media because you love it. You write content because you love it. Don't just do it to do it because it's gonna be empty. Empty. It's not gonna have anything behind it. If social media is your jam, if you are connecting to a fan base, if you, if you are, um, you know, if, if you have a platform for something else, whether it's cooking or vlogging or um, an influencer, then by all means use social media, but don't feel, again, the story of suffering, don't feel that you have to get into social media. I don't want you to be afraid of it either. Don't do it because you're afraid of it. Um, but don't feel obligated to do it if it's not, if it's not a passion and it's not a love of yours. Okay. It is important to learn how to do it so you can decide, Hey, listen, um, I want to do this. This is feeling uh, on the support of my value proposition or it's not. Um, but don't feel that you have to. And yes, social media can be a very powerful way to reach out to people, but in the right way. And the way that I describe it and the way that I help my clients to do it is just by simply, again, when you reach out to someone, you don't want to put somebody to work. Nobody wants to be put to work, okay? When you reach out to somebody, just think about this. It's sort of like, think about it like dating or, or, or friends, uh, making friends. You don't want anything from that other person at first. You're just trying to make a connection, let them know who you are, pay tribute to their great writing, to their great shows. But you don't... 
people can smell that a mile away that somebody's approaching where somebody wants something. Nobody wants to be put, you know, nobody wants to be put to work. And I would exercise caution when asking people to read your scripts and know that's sort of like, um, there was a beautiful, <laughs> there was a really interesting Village Voice article many years ago. And I'm not gonna say the full title cause it's, um, but it's the, the title of it is, No, I Will Not Read Your Effing Script. <laughs> Fill in the blanks. And it's not about that people don't want to do something like that. It's that when you put somebody to work, when you ask them to read your script, it's the equivalent of asking a painter to come over to the residence that you live in and paint your house for two to six hours. So in the beginning stages of these relationships, just focus on making a couple friends, you know? It's sort of like two animals sort of sniffing each other, just getting a sense if they like each other. So it's an important thing to think about is we have our wants, needs, and desires, but you don't wanna let those get in the way of your personality or people really knowing you because that's um, what's gonna get you everything. Uh, Michelle uh, Thomas, uh, thank you. Let's see, oh no, uh, I think it was, yeah. All right. A few more questions here. Asked before about burning bridges. Yeah, you know what, you guys? If you're great people and you're great actors, you need to let go of the burning bridges. There is nothing that's going to be burning. Uh, the phone is the only way to earn the right to then send an email um, follow-up. And though it may hurt your chest, your hand is never going to catch on fire. You will never catch on fire. And you will never be blacklisted. I get that it's a, it's a scary thing but it's the only way through this. And only you can be real about yourselves and ask yourself, am I sort of Olympic ready? And your Olympic best is right there with you. Nobody has something um, to sell you and give back to you. It's right there. And so I have a lot of fun helping the actors to sort of clear away the brush to bring out, you know, to bring themselves out in the work. Yeah, let's see. Um... Oh yeah, cool, thank you. I just, I would tell you guys, especially now when we all need to be really good to ourselves and take care of ourselves and maybe step back from some of this stuff. I don't wanna, notice what I'm not doing. I'm not giving you a whole bunch of list of things that you have to do. I'm actually telling you all the things you don't have to do so you can take a breath and take good care of yourselves and like feel amazing. Because feeling amazing is the only way you can pick up a telephone, not when you want something, when there's any desperation in it. So I just think now more than ever uh, is a time to maybe sit back, like how you take care of yourself and the good things you do to yourself and to other people is perhaps is the most important thing in helping you to get to where you want to in the career. So I kind of want to vacuum all of this sort of, uh, yeah, a lot of the myths and crap off the table, but um, sometimes you got to just like close the lid to your head and say, no, 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 no. I'm doing this on my own terms. Uh, this has to feel like really good for me. And I may want to shut down everything for a day and not think about acting and just like, you know, or a week and you should do that. And I, and I may want to talk about that at some point with you guys. It's like, what do you do, you know, in the downtime and we're not acting, it should be absolutely taking care of yourselves and so, again, I thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart for just, you know, just like hanging out. I think the best thing we can do with each other these days is just to like talk, is to like let out, you know, steam and just have a conversation. And I do welcome you to, um, would love to see you in one of our classes sometime next week. Uh, my master class, again, is a small group of our celebrity series lead level actors with industry guests from around the world. We're currently working with, um, just opened up the work in Japan with some of the greatest writers, directors, producers who are creating, starring in some of the biggest American productions. Um, so so it, it's super exciting. There's lots of exciting stuff going on, but um, at the heart of it is, this is the people I work with, it's a family. These are people who have been at the studio for over 10 years. So um, look forward to you guys being a part of it and just, Take really good care of yourselves. And thank you guys again so much for uh, letting me speak with you today and for keep coming back, for coming back for more every week. And I am excited to um, uh, hopefully be with you guys next week. Take care and, uh, and be well and look forward to seeing you soon.